How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Welcome to the show. Thanks Thank you so much, much for up. coming around. And uh, the dance group is called uh, the Jamaican and beats Jam dancers. and beat dancers, yo. Okay, men in masks. <laughs> good to see you. Good to have you. Good to see my brother. Now, uh, every year, like I've already said, we have some new talent, mm. new kids uh, that are unleashed. You mm. know. Yeah. I understand. I was uh, watching on YouTube and I noticed that uh, you've not started doing music this year. Absolutely. You have been grinding for quite a while. Quite a while for, for this spotlight. Wow. Yeah. So um, you, you're going to use the mic, yo? You're oh. going to use the mic. Oh, uh, for how long have you been doing music? Let's start from there. Because mm. you see, people don't seem to understand sometimes that uh, before you officially get unveiled, to the public all right, all right. Uh, you, you've been hustling for a while absolutely uh, how, what's your story mm, before i began like to get all this spotlight and to get like start performing for people yeah i used to sing in a, in a ch church band okay i was in a church band because you know i scored from toronto canada that is on Ont ontario mm. so a banga in amalang and canada used to go for these church bands right by then that was something i used to do off work because i was in criminology yeah so it was too much of so much books on my head eh, what what was that criminology <laughs> Criminal? Yeah, hey, I was doing criminology. Criminology. Yeah, hey, criminology. Okay. Yeah, but but what's when that? But when I'm saying it's a past, it sounds yeah. like another way. Okay. Yeah. What's that? What's cr criminology? Oh, that's that's under law. It's under law. Yeah, it's under law. Okay. Mm. Okay. Quite interesting. <laughs> so, uh, you you deal you know with criminal law? That mm. is the area that you mastered. Yeah, but that wasn't like my favor. That was a flavor of my parents, you know. Okay. Yeah, my parents were like up to that. Tuagamana for fuke law, yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, after that, mm. did you, you know, ever practice or you left it at getting uh, your, of course, uh, your papers and uh, that was it? No, having the opportunity of being in the top world city, yeah. which I, 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 like, I had a lot of equipment around me, yeah. a lot of opportunities, a lot of like, talents to learn from. Yeah. So the, the time I used to get to go to the church bands, right? These okay. guys all had all, all the equipment, they had the speakers, you know, they had the pianos, they had everything around. Yeah. So that, that gave me the opportunity of like learning each and everything around me. Yeah. Because every time I used to come from school, I was so obsessed with that on my head and I was like, I need something to get it off, right? Yeah. Yeah, because most of the days in Canada, remember it's winter. Yeah. So you keep most of the time indoor. Okay. Does it make sense? I've never been to Canada, so, mm. you know, uh, some of the things I just see are then that, uh, of course, <laughs> they experience winter from this season to this season. Oh. Uh, so, so the, the anyone like here has been to Canada? Mm. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into the, so, ma the real issues mm. here. A banga, Okay. to sing. As in the guys I used to sing, they were really so good. You know, sometimes it may be a church band, okay. but it's trending all over the country. Mm. That's funny about that's what's funny about those people. Yeah. Even a band can train more than an artist. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, so this guy right. gave me so the opportunity of using the You their got equipment. the exposure while in Canada. Absolutely. Then you started doing music. Secretly, without anyone knowing even any of my family members. Okay. The only way you can hide music from the parents is when there are no visuals, right? Truly. When you do not have your brand out there. Truly. Okay? Mm, truly. So what happened when your parents found out, because I am sure at some point they found out that you were pursuing music. Yeah. That, that, that happened in Uganda here. Okay. So when it happened, I was bounced from home. They kicked you out of home? Yeah. They're like, ah, uh ah. -uh. The truth the 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 was sick. This is like it was. It was a religious family. I respect those traditions. Yeah. Yeah, so I am I'm gonna get on I'm gonna get on this. I know this. I'm gonna get on Yeah. So how are you managing? Well, you you know. No, that's you, that's the, that's the glorifying the, the glorifying part about like truly doing what you want. Yeah. You find people who you should connect with. By the way. Okay. So that time was off my family. I found people who were who needed to, to like who are who were in play of what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. So that time I spent in matching day. Meeting Ian Pro, meeting Jalai, Frank Jalai, yeah. meeting Chip Sweezy, those guys like groomed me. Yeah. They told me, man, it's okay, man, that's the same story. Yeah. yeah. But man, if you love this, you gotta like, you know, be up to it. Yeah. I've uh, had a chance of, uh, of course, I've seen some of your videos. They are good quality videos. Some of them, I guess, shot in Dubai. 
uh, some I don't know where you shot them from, but since you're here, mm. uh, you will tell us, you know, uh, you actually, you know, shot a video with Lydia Jasmine. Yeah. She's such, like, she's such a good talent. Yeah. Mm. What is your relationship like with Lydia Jasmine? Jasmine. Yeah. Jasmine, she's, a, she's, a, she's a, like, a good talent and she's my friend. Yeah. Yeah. She's not even only my friend. She's one of my good mentors of my career. Oh, Jasmine is also a mentor. Yeah, she's a good Interesting. mentor. Interesting. Yeah. That is good. <laughs> By the way, Jasmine is going to be joining us next Saturday. She will be on the show. Yeah. So to all, as she calls her fans, Jasmine addicts. Yeah. yeah? She will be on the show next week. But right now, we're still focusing on uh, Prince Omal. And uh, so what happens when you reach out to someone to do a song? Now, like in this case, when you did one with uh, Lydia Jasmine, it involves, uh, of course, uh, quite a lot. How do you go about that? What's the arrangement like? Those are simple troubles. Just like sitting down and planning, and I'm like, okay, what does it take? Mm. What does it take the full management of Jalai? What does it take to take the artist? Because she's a, she's a brand, you know? She is, yeah. Yeah, so to lift a brand from a nation to another nation. Yeah. So it needs a lot of, like, getting in touch with the management. Okay. And as well being fair term with the artist as well. Yeah. But because she was so close and she was a good, she was a good person to me. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that good vibe we had together, she was like, yeah, I got, I'll, go, I'll go with you. I'll go, you'll go with her. Yeah. All right. So, um... You see, move, music is very challenging, right? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, sometimes you need to be signed to a label for them to assist you, uh, do this and that, from financing the music to promotion to distribution, uh, among us other things that, uh, of course, that you need in place, you know, mm -hmm. for you to uh, get rolling. Yeah. Uh, are you signed to any label? In other words. The label it's Prince Omar Music. Prince Omar Music. Yeah. So you are your own boss. I'm my own boss. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Is it not the part where you clap? Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, start up a label, sign yourself. That's what DJ Khalid says, yo. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite interesting. Uh, so um, you did a, a collaboration with the uh, Daddy Andre, mm. John Black, and uh, you know yourself. Uh, of course, uh, how how how's that song worked for you? Because it seems like the song, uh, if you were to compare that song with other material that you've done, that is one song which is out there in the public. I was seeing how people were vibing to it uh, the moment you started doing your thing. You know, uh, how was the experience working with those two guys? Um, first of all, in the, in the industry, that person that I've, I've got to vibe with more yeah. has been Daddy Andre. I think uh, there's an answer that I came here. Yeah. I was with Daddy Andre. I don't know if you recall it, right? Yeah. yeah. I was here with Daddy Andre. He's okay. the guy who discovered the taste of the music that I was into. Yeah. Yeah, because I was so much influenced with, by the English, and as well I wanted to give people, like, locally what they wanted. Yeah. It was like, I, I'll, I'll help you model that into a craft that okay. people here will appreciate, as yeah. well as people abroad will appreciate. All right. Yeah. You have a brand new single, the last one, and uh, that is uh, Hallelujah. Uh, where is the inspiration? Is the inspiration from church? Because what I see in the video is totally different from the Hallelujah as we see in church. No. Hallelujah, it's just a metaphor. Okay. Mm. So ha hallelujah! You know? <laughs> eh? <laughs> All right, so uh, the video, where was the video shot? Because uh, we're about to check out the video, you know? And uh, who shot the video? How do you put the song together? Uh, just give us a brief. I think in one of my videos that I've been shooting, Hallelujah is the most expensive right now. Wow. Yeah. Although you see others, I traveled to Dubai. Mm. Those ones were ah, that was cheap. Yeah. But because we used a gold, like a gold plated, like platinum hotel, okay. that's gold Zanzibar. Even Damon himself, it's hard to shoot in that place. So how how much is shooting in a place like that? No, the place to just give us a contract. The contract was simple. Yeah. You'll give us a concert at our place as well. You tag us in the video. Okay. When it gets a lot of views. That was the the. the, the that was a contract. The contract. Yeah, we talked about money. They're like, we don't want money. Yeah. So, but okay, though, 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 though they're like beginning. I, I better How did they end up favoring you? Because I'm mm. sure there are so many other musicians who've reached out to them. Surely there are a lot. But I think, I think it's just a blessing. Yeah. Because when I reached there with Shasha Vibes, I was like, man, you know what, Shasha, this is the place I want to use. Yeah. Because they give us a tour. It's just an amazing place. Like, yeah. Because you see in the video, when I got an opportunity of shooting under the water. Yeah. It's crazy. You went for like diving under, like, under the sea. Yeah. You see, like, the, it's, a, it's a beautiful place. Like, yeah. There's some residences under the water. Like, 
it's just good. Okay. So um, have you mm, finally made peace with your family or mm. you are still uh, that uh, <laughs> prodigal, prodigal son <laughs> that, that is doing his thing? Eh? <laughs> or you made peace with them? No, I made peace with them. Okay. In fact, when my dad sees me on TV, he's like, Oyo mwana wangi, nza muzara. Oyo mutama nwa wangi. Nza muzara. Oyo mwana wangi, ayari wakachoyo. So he's with his friends and they're like, Hey, mutama nyo? Hey, mwana nama nyo yimba. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as a Muslim guy, I don't know whether you're a staunch Muslim, you know. Mm. I'm a Muslim. But uh, how has uh, religion influenced uh, your music and... Uh, how is it perceived out there? Because you see, I know with Muslims, it's Allah Akbar, Akbar Matari. You know, DJ Fikyo Bimani, Bapana music woko la sila mamutari la limu. But how has it shaped your music or influence? Before replying to that, let me ask also DJ Fik. DJ Fik, how has it worked out for you? Being a day. DJ Fik, do you have an answer to that? Because, of course, at first it's not, it's not easy. Yeah. Like, 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 uh, being in a, in, in a Muslim family, yeah. it's not easy for them to accept such things yeah but with time uh, uh me starting at starting this dj dj's thing yeah uh my dad was like Man I don't know. Man I so Man I so but with time they get to know yeah. with time with time they get to know that yeah what he's doing is right yeah he's getting money out of it with, yeah you know so with time they get to accept yeah Okay, that's good to know. And uh, DJ Fik is one of those a few DJs who is 24-7 uh, sober, you know. <laughs> I wonder how he does it that, uh, you know, uh, after his night shift, he's able to connect straight uh, for the day shift, which is a television. Yeah? Is I think it takes some level of a discipline for one to be able to uh, have that. Because I Correct see up. there are people that book to appear on TV interviews. And then they wake up at around mid and eh, because you know, they, I'm, I'm meant to be at this place. I think it takes some level of discipline uh, for an artist or any entertainer to be great. I'll give you some live examples. Some of the greatest people that we have in Uganda who are, uh, are like role models, guys that you're seeing are very successful with what they are doing. It's like they, do not, they don't mix drugs or or whatever you know it's like they have that discipline i don't really want to talk much about drugs that is a story for another day but when you look at eddie kenzo eddie kenzo is 24 7 what sober you know baby cool 24 7 sober if he's booked you know if he has you know he's been booked for an interview or being somewhere he'll be there on time so i think it's still an issue of uh personal discipline so to say yeah that's what i'm thinking i'm just sharing it's my a it's yeah. a character it's a character it's the character it's how it's how like you look at what you're doing yeah if it like you don't only look at it as a passion and you make it your purpose yeah so you gotta like vibe to it all right mm. Prince omar ladies and gentlemen yeah